Hello guys, this is the Retro Guy again with yet another video and um, well I would like to take the chance to uh, thank my my sponsors. <laughs> what am I just kidding here? There's no sponsors, there's barely viewers. So yeah, well let's go on with that. So the video here today is uh, to show you this uh, little guy that is sitting behind me right there, you see? So this is a project I have been working on for a while now. Uh, I have left it for a while uh, because I had some other things to do, but uh, I, I would say that pretty much it's finished now. So let's go on and talk a little bit about it, okay? So let me change the camera view here. So this is the guide that I wanted to show you. This is a project that I worked on for a while, uh, whenever I had free time. So basically what this is, is, uh, is a Macintosh SE case, right, that I just salvaged. And uh, the case is not in perfect shape, as you can see, and I really didn't care because uh, the idea behind this project is actually to show a very vintage, old computer, right? And, uh, but inside, it is something else, of course. So the keyboard is original. The mouse is not. Uh, the mouse, the original mouse for the SC was the square one, so this one here is not uh, the original mouse that actually came with the kit, but uh, it is original Apple and it works, uh, it's ADB and etc. So the keyboard, again, original, it's uh, fully, fully operational. It is ADB, as you can see, right? And uh, on the back here, so as you can see, we have uh, the power connector. We have two USB ports, uh, both being used at the time here. The other ports were basically closed. Uh, they are not being used at all, right? And uh, down there, we have the power button, the red one. And up here, we have um, an SD card slot and the Ethernet, right? So that's... Uh, that's it basically so one thing that is in interesting here is that uh, as you can see the glass right this is the actual uh, CRT monitor glass original from the the Macintosh SE what I did is uh, I actually went to the trouble of uh, cutting it you basically I use a grinder an angle, angle grinder to do that it was not easy but the worst part was not even cutting it but uh, polishing it so that it could be uh, an acceptable level of transparency. The problem with those CRT monitors is that they are coated inside so the electrons actually could render the image, right? And uh, you have to really sand and uh, grind, basically, everything from the inside out so that uh, you could actually have a, a good uh, transparent glass thing going on. So it's not really easy. I almost regretted that I started in the first place, but in the end, like, it worked, so I'm happy. So. What you need to know about this is uh, inside, and I'm going to show the insides of this in another video. You have uh, a one-board computer. It's not Raspberry Pi. I'm using actually a Pentium one-board computer, uh, the Udo X86 project, basically. And uh, it has 8 gigs of RAM, and uh, it runs on a Pentium uh, processor. Uh, what else? The monitor is a Chinese generic monitor that has an aspect ratio of 4 by 3, by, by 3, which is perfect for this project. And the monitor was basically glued together with the original CRT front, right? Uh, and in the end, what you have is this. So let me power it on. So just press the button here. You hear the fan and there you go, like this is the image, so let me sit down here. So the fan only uh, goes when you start it up, and then it goes down. And yeah, so here is the computer booting up. As you can see, like uh, what I did, so just trying to shoot the insides here, right? So you cannot see really the the seam uh, between the, the, the monitor and the CRT uh, glass which is makes it actually very good so it really sits well with this project 
and the image is great so it's running Ubuntu right now but I have installed um, retro Pi on it even though it's not a Pi it uh, there is a an x86 retro Pi project so I just have to go to games here and select the retro Pi and it boots up and then from there I can run the Macintosh for example emulation so just uh, a and start then I'm basically going to uh, create a script that it goes straight on to the Macintosh uh, as of now it's actually asking me to uh, tune it up so I'm just going to delete the things that I don't need and start so the boot is really fast so now we have a functional Macintosh a color of course so everything works if I actually go here to sound for example like if I go to the about Macintosh here I don't know if it is readable but uh, it shows it's running system 7.5.5 and uh, the amount of memory so it has 8 megs of memory I can basically control that because this is an emulator right and uh, everything works so if I go to control panel sound for example so the sound well it should be operational but uh, yeah that's the thing so I'm using HDMI basically to connect the board to the screen right and uh, sometimes uh, the Ubuntu that is running underneath uh, it basically loses the configuration and it uh, goes back to analog so I have to basically just go back to Ubuntu here so shut down the Mac and then shut down the emulation station here so just uh, select the quit option and uh, quit emulation station yes I'm sure I want to quit so and then in here I get to configure the sound properties so if I go to sound settings here I have to figure out why it keeps changing automatically right? it should not be that so as you can see like uh, the built-in audio that is being used is the analog option and I have to change that back to HDMI and then I have sound so just start emulation station again and on to the Mac emulation so Macintosh and start I can hear the sound now so the great thing about those uh, this screen is that it has uh, a couple of uh, built-in uh, speakers to it which is very convenient for projects like that so it's starting up the Mac and if I go to sound yeah it's actually quite loud so. <laughs> it just doesn't allow me to change the actual uh, the, the volume but uh, it works as you can see the sound is working just fine right and I also took the opportunity to create a larger disk so this one has 200 meg so I can copy my files and everything easily to this guy here right so let me shut it down and back to the emulation station where I can also shut down the emulation the, go back to the Linux there you have it right so one thing that I forgot to show you before is that I also added a USB port down here there see where it was uh, basically it was the location of the original keyboard so now it has a USB port so I can add for example like uh, a controller like this one here and play all the games and everything or just use it as a regular Ubuntu machine so it's basically like uh, yeah a nice project so hope you guys enjoyed it and stay tuned for the the second video where I'm going to open it up and show you what I've done uh, inside right so just to show you here like um, I forgot also to mention that so what I'm using here to use the ADB uh, keyboard and mouse is this converter so this is actually quite old. This is a Macaulay uh, ADB to USB converter. 
and it works beautifully in projects like this. Uh, it's not very easy to find those nowadays. I was lucky enough to actually have this stored for quite a while and it's working just fine, right? So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. So stay tuned and see you guys next time. Bye.